Hello, good evening. Am I audible? Yes, you are, Hope. Good evening. Ah, thank you. Thanks, Linda. So, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, welcome to, to today's job mentorship session. And it's lovely, it's lovely to have you guys. So, my name is Hope. Uh, I think we've interacted before. And if we haven't met, you've interacted with Linda, who is a colleague. So we can go ahead and start. The topic today is secret management. So just to start off, uh, maybe one person can tell the, us if they have an idea of what secret management is. Hello. Uh, yes, Teddy, you can go ahead. If I get you correctly, oh, hi, first of all, sorry. Good evening to you. Good evening. Yeah, um, if I get your question correctly, I think secret managing is like from secret, which means something that should be kept between a specified group or not, whichever type of people, and then managing, making sure that it remains like that without leaking to the outside according to how I understand it. Okay, thank you. That's that's quite a good explanation. So we we'll learn more about secret management, what it entails, and what are we protecting? What are these secrets in an essence? So today our speaker is Kiru Maina. Kiru is a dedicated cybersecurity professional with a strong focus on application security cloud security and DevSecOps. With a passion for protecting data and systems, Kiru has excelled in his current role as a data protection officer at Solutec by enhancing security practices and conducting assessments. He is an information security graduate from KCA University and a proud Cyber Shuja alumni from the Cloud and Network Security co course. He's a proactive advocate for cybersecurity best practices, striving to make digital environments more secure and educating others along the way. So, hi Kiru, uh, welcome so much uh, to the job mentorship session. And yeah, you can have the floor now. Hello. Hi, Hope. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, you guys can you can hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Okay. So, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Kiru Maina. Yes, Ted, you have a question. Oh my hand, I uh, forgot to. Oh, it's okay. Uh -huh. So my name is Kiru Maina, as you've heard. Uh, I'd like to think of myself as a continuous cybersecurity learner. And uh, so lately I've been learning about, I've been doing quite a bit of secret management uh, stuff. So when, when I was invited to give a session, I just thought I should I should do. I should. I should. I, we should talk about this because it's a bit. It's, it's a mind-blowing topic. Yeah. Uh, so I shall now share my screen, and uh, uh, you guys can see my screen. Yes, we can. Uh, okay. Good. Okay, so let's get started. So, uh -huh. so we're going to talk about um, uh, what secret management is and what is secret management, uh, evolution of secret management, the challenges that have been faced, and then tools and technologies and uh, case studies of where uh, breaches have occurred due to 
in poor secret management practices. And then uh, we're going to talk about how secret management integrates with um, DevSecOps. And, uh, and then finally, we're going to have questions. So, OK, let's get right through it. So, uh -huh. so what are these secrets? So secrets are basically confidential pieces of information used to access and authenticate various aspects of an application. So uh -huh. when you think about it, secrets are things like um, for people coming from a software development background, you have things like um, API keys, your database credentials, your 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 certificates, those are your if it's if it's an if it's a web application you have your ssl certificates if it's um if you if you're using a server so you have things like api keys and if you have a, a version control uh, if you have things like github and uh, gitlab and other similar version control tools you have um uh Things like access tokens and so on and so forth, just to just to give you an idea of what secrets are. So these secrets are really important because they help your application communicate with other applications, which makes your application better. But even when you're handling these secrets, you have um you need to have a bit of um you need to have a bit of care with how you're handling these secrets because if these secrets are leaked, you're going to you 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 you're going to, this might lead to breaches that might involve um exposure of personal data use of resources use of um unauthorized use of resources and um uh reputational damage and so on and so forth yes so uh huh. so i think that's that's good for the introduction uh, for me slides are a bit of a of a, a of, of a way to give the reader direction, so I might not just read verbatim what I've written on the slides. So yes, we can continue. Uh -huh. So why secret management matters? So as I've said earlier, secret management is is a secure. It's it's basically one of the foundations when you're building um when you're building an application because when you're building an if you're working in a in a software in a software company or in any any organization that handles secrets for any matter, uh, secrets of any matter, any any type, uh, this is basically any organization. So some of these things are foundational. You need them so that whatever it is that you're using works. So think about um, right now we're using Teams. So basically, Teams. Uh, when you start looking at the code base of Teams, you're going to see places where there is an API that interacts with some other Windows product or some other uh, some mailing service and so on and so forth. So secrets are foundational in any application or in any organization that develops or maintains an in-house application. So and then um, again, secrets protect um, sensitive information from unauthorized access and also ensures uninterrupted operations and prevent uh, data breaches and uh, also uh, if you have good secret management practices, you'll be able to securely store your critical assets as an organization, and I shall explain that in the next slide. So secret management. Uh, secret management has been a really, really difficult, um, uh, really difficult. Uh, it's, 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 it's been a long journey on how secret management has developed in the past. And even now I tend to think the journey is not over yet because there's new then there's new technologies and the uh, cyber attackers are not sleeping. So they'll always find a way and then uh, you have to find a way to counter their new, they'll always find a vector. So you have to find another uh, a counter a way to counter the new attack vector and so on and so forth. So uh, initially, um, for those who did, uh, for those who come from a software development background or did um, software development projects in campus, uh, 
you've seen practices where you've seen languages where you'd um where you where you had good secrets on on your code so you have let's say if it's a php application you have that connect.php i don't know if you guys are familiar with that so you'd have your database username database password your host and whatever else it is that you need to connect and then if you need and we need to store your api key you would have um you need to store your api key you'd have um you'd have a uh, what's it called you'd 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 had code it on your on 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 code itself so that you're able to just call it as a variable so that that was that was the acceptable form maybe 10 12 years ago but then um that was an issue because now um some of this some of this um some of these applications uh, find they are usually stored in a version control system. So you'd have an, uh, your your code base lying on GitHub, for example. And then um, if this say this repository was made public, um, you'd be able to an attacker will just be able to go through your code base and get those particular secrets. So let's use database credentials because that's the best example of a secret that I can think of right now. Um, you could uh, you'd be able to take this secret and then uh, go to the because the host is there. So you just go to the host and then log in or just log in from from your terminal. Um, and then you'd be able to access this data. So this was highly discouraged. And then um, uh, when you start looking at frameworks like, for example, um, let's 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 take laravel because we say with php right so uh -huh. so you have so laravel has this way of handling secrets that you have you store it in a separate file and then they called it environmental variables it's it's also there in i think that's 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 the standard until now uh, a really huge number of companies still a really huge number of applications still have the environmental variables uh, file that's stored. So uh, these environmental variables carry these secrets, but then we, we say that environmental variables should be should not be checked to version control. So you should be given version. You should be given your environmental variables, um, maybe physically or using some other channel for you to be able to load uh, to have the data on your on the root directory of your application and then you're able to you're able to you're able to you're able to what what is it called you're able to uh, i'm losing my words here you're able to you're able to you're able to able to use you're able to access those particular secrets in your application so yes and then um so that also have has its own issues so you had um you have cases of um depending on how misconfiguration so if you have a misconfiguration on your on your server there's a way that these environmental variables can be can be leaked if if you know what exactly you're doing so yeah that's one of the issues and then also environmental variables also not uh are also not that watertight because even if you give it to employees you have insider threats as an attack vector now because what happens if this employee leaves and they were disgruntled? Or uh, what happens if this employee has malicious at, malicious intentions? So environmental variables will have also have their their good, but they have their own they have their own set of problems. And then um, so with the with the with the coming of DevOps and um, and shifting left and 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 all those beautiful things. Um, now applications are being built fast, uh, really fast. So you need a way to scale as fast as you're building, and you also need a way to secure your, you're able to manage your application secrets in a secure manner. So yeah, so now you see, now now you have um different tools like um Conjure, you have your Azure Key Vault for people for people working on for businesses running on the cloud. You have things like HashiCorp Vault and so on and so forth. 
you have your Google key management system and etc etc I, I will just we'll talk about it yeah so see challenges in secret management I, I think I've talked about this uh, I'll just talk about things that um, we haven't I haven't touched on so security risks so uh how i think we've touched on security risks basically in the entire previous slide and then um scaling issues so scaling issues as as your application grows you also need a way to you also need a way to ensure that you're, you're able to handle and manage your secrets in a scalable manner so if you have a thousand secrets uh you should be able to easily manage those a thousand secrets without there being cases of secrets sprawls and stuff like that and then also access control access control was, is one of the issues that are facing the environmental variables way of doing things so uh huh so you have to you it's a, it's a bit of a challenge managing who has access to this particular secret so you might find cases where your secrets land into the wrong hands and and, and cases of that sort. So yes, and then um, rotation, 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 rotation. Uh, this comes from um, cases where you have uh, every once in a while as a cybersecurity person, you, you, you're told to give advice on uh, password security and stuff like that. You tell people let's change passwords after every 90 days and stuff like that. So, uh, so the same, a password is actually a secret. So the same way you want people to rotate their passwords after every 90 days, you have to do the same for your application secrets. Not every 90 days per se, but uh, on a regular basis because you need to change these things. Also, as you, if it's a really big application and you have a thousand secrets, let's say after every 60 days you have to change these secrets, it becomes a bit tedious uh, because, uh, you know, doing maybe a thousand secrets is not something that you can sit down and do it in like 20 minutes or something like that. It's something that you have to sit down and do it maybe a whole day's work or two days work before you do it if you're doing it manually. So rotation also is a bit of an issue. So yes, so with these challenges, um, different people have sat down and, and thought about different solutions that address these challenges and um, uh -huh. so some of the tools these are some of the tools that can help you manage secrets nice uh in an efficient and sustainable manner so aws has their own called aws secrets manager so this comes in build with aws and um, it works pretty well for the applications and other internal aws services and then you also have azure solution so azure solution is is uh, is called Azure Key Vault, so it gives you the ability to also store your application, uh, scale, uh, gives you the ability to Hello, Kiru. Hello. Hello, we lost you for a minute, sir. Uh, at what point did I lose you? You were talking about the Azure Key Vault. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. And I haven't really strayed so far. So on Azure Key Vault, it's an Azure solution, just like AWS able to have sustainable you have to have your you have to you can be able to easily 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 rotate and manage your secrets on if you're using if you're using azure as your as a cloud service and you also have um cyber arc uh cyber arc has its own product called cyber arc conjure so this is an open source solution uh can be used by anybody you can use it on any cloud platform that you wish. Um, and 
if it's not the best, it's one of the best um, secret management. If it's not the best, it's one of the best secret management solutions that you you ever going to come across. And then um, uh, you have Hashicorp Vault, which I tend to think is the best uh, the best secret management tool uh, out there because this this has been made. Um, really, really well because it's built for automation. It's built for uh, it's built for scalability. It's built to uh, manage to work in any cloud platform that you can think of. If you if you are an on-premise company, you're able to run HashiCorp Vault very easily. It gives you a chance to. It has APIs that you can interact with it, so it makes it developer friendly. It's it's an it's an out of it's an uh, it's a tool that's way ahead of its time. Uh -huh. So I think we can continue because when I start talking about Hashiko Vault, I won't finish. I am really a huge fan of Vault. So yes, let's look at some of the cases where we've had um we've had um we've had issues really relating to breaches that were caused by a lack of uh, proper secret management practices. So we can we can start with Uber. So Uber's Uber's case was a bit, I think it was also mine. It was also a turning point for them as a company at that given time. So uh, so Uber had um, AWS access keys on their on their code base, so I think it was a public GitHub repository. So someone went and got these access keys. So and then um, and then they used it to access unauthorized information. So uh ha. Huh. So what Uber did at that time, that's when they uh, they they started a bug bounty program. So that's why I'm saying I think it was a really huge turning point for them. So they. They conducted an audit. They deployed a secret management tool, and uh, and then um, and of and and then they, they they say that they fired the people who are responsible for that for that particular incident, uh, uh, who are yeah, who could have prevented that incident from happening, and uh, and then they had a, they had their bug bounty program, which is there up to today. So yeah, that was I think that was a bit. I was a bit I was a bit intriguing and then um we also have um github so uh, github itself had um exposed personal had exposed personal access tokens so if you use github you know that you can use your you can create tokens that have um that have that have access to different aspects of your repository or um if you're if you're in an organization your organization or your organizational information GitHub organizational information. So if you have this, uh, and if the permissions are different permissions, um, if you have different permissions set on that particular uh, access token, you're able to you're able to you're able to do quite a bit of things with it. So this particular access, some of these access tokens had access to uh, repositories that were owned by by GitHub. So this was also a huge incident, but then personal access tokens are meant to be, re you can easily revoke them. So when this was discovered, those tokens were quickly revoked and new ones were issued. And then um, I don't think there was, there was nothing, or I don't think there was anything worth reporting from that incident. And then we have um, Slack. So Slack is a, Slack is a messaging, Slack is a messaging platform. So, uh, so Slack had also, uh, exposed their database credentials. I can't remember where exactly. So they had um, unauthorized database access. Uh, they had exposed um, database credentials that someone discovered and then was able to access uh, Slack's user database. And then they they exposed quite a bit of users' personal information. And then uh, that was that happened because of that was straight up uh, poor secret management. Yes, and then. Uh, integration with DevSecOps, so people doing cloud and network security. So this is how secret management can help you in your career, uh, in your in your career growth as a as a security analyst or as a as an application security analyst, as a 
as a DevSecOps person, as a as a cloud security analyst, and so on and so forth. So, uh, huh. so you have uh, uh, you have all these interesting tools in 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 the in the DevOps by in your in your DevOps setup. So you might have things like um, Veracode for your 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 code security. You have things like Jenkins for your CI/CD. Uh, maybe you have Travis CI. You have Circle, whatever it is. You you have all these interesting tools, and then you have um, you have your your cloud your cloud platform. So you have let's say you're running on um, let's use GCP. So you're running on Google Cloud, and um, you have uh you have all this other you have all this other interesting you have all these other interesting tools so all these tools at one point or another will need secrets so you might need uh let's say for google you might need a service account to maybe authenticate into something so if you're using for example uh if you're using something like kubernetes um you're able to kubernetes also needs their own needs secrets some secrets for it to work. your workloads need some secrets uh for it to for for the for the applications to work i hope i'm not speaking greek and uh yeah uh -huh. so you have your kubernetes workloads and then they need um secrets so you you might need to you might need to properly handle these secrets so that you're able to automate these secrets to be given on demand and then you also need to control who what permissions these secrets have as part of your as as part of as part of your what's that triangle the triple a triangle authorization accountability and authentication so you know, you might need to control who what acts what exactly can you do with this secret what exactly do these other tools need to do with this secret so you need to have your authorization right you need to have your accountability right so you also need to have a proper audit trail to see who exactly or what exactly has access to this particular secret so you you have your that's your accountability part of the triple a triangle so you also need to properly have an you need to have a proper audit trail for your secret management and then um yeah you also need to uh, automate how these secrets are being deployed. So uh, you don't need to go and click a button every time. You you're in you're in you're in tech. So there's there's always a is a is a really contradicting statement that says um uh, tech people are lazy. You guys in tech are a bit lazy and stuff like that. I don't think I don't think that's true because um we just want to make life easier. That doesn't mean that you're making yourself lazy but anyway yeah so you need to automate quite a few things for for secret management to be really uh, to be to be scalable and for you to be able to properly rotate your secrets for you to be able to properly manage your uh for you to be able to properly deploy these secrets uh, you have need to have the right policies you need to have uh, the, if it's human operators like me and you, you need to have a way that they'll be able to authenticate securely into the application management system, uh, in the, into the secret management system and so on and so forth. Yeah, so that's, I hope I haven't sold this slide short. Yeah, so, uh, huh. I, I had a demo here. I was supposed to do a demo, but uh i had for some, some time now hello yeah, i was saying hello. we can't see your screen for some time now oh you guys can't see my screen we can we oh can. you can yeah okay. your phone. visible visible your visible now visible visible Okay. Uh huh. You guys have been able to see everything that I was talking about, or I lost you at some point. 
we we can see okay okay so i'd like to open open this uh i don't think there's anything else what uh to talk about at this point so i think we can we can talk we can you, we can have a short q and a where we can I can answer questions and you guys can ask questions yeah Uh, thank you so much, Kiru, for that extensive cover on secret management. So let us have questions at this point. So before questions start coming, uh, I expect mm -hmm. hands to be raised in a few minutes. Um, my question is, is there like a discussion disaster recovery or business continuity plan when it comes to secret management in the case where you may lose or, or the application you're using goes down or is hacked or something happens, do secrets get backed up or something of the sort? Uh -huh. Well, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, well, they're not backed up per se, depending on your deployment models as a as an organization or as a as an as, as an organization you might choose to have uh, something called a high availability model so you'll have you'll have um maybe you'll have your server running secret so let's let's call let's use Let's use HashiCorp Vault for example. So you have your HashiCorp Vault server running. So you don't have one server. You have multiple servers, maybe maybe two servers or three servers. So that in a case where um, your 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 primary Vault server goes down, you might have another server coming in from another region. So let's say you have uh, a Vault server running on cloud of this assumption is me that you're running on cloud. So you have a vault server stationed in a data center in the in the in the UK, for example. So let's say something happens to the data center at UK and there's downtime. So that means your vault server is not working at that particular moment in time. So what you need to what you can do is you can have a, a secondary server of a running vault uh, on on in at another data center so let's use let's use south africa for example so you might have a uh a, a vault server in south africa so when server a goes down when there's an issue with the data center in the uk um the data center in south africa might not be having might not be having issues so you will be able to recover and um continue with uh what exactly you, you're able to recover and continue with what exactly it was that you're doing. So you're, you're able to continue, you're able to have your your vault instance running. So yes, you have um, the high availability way that works really well. In terms of backing up, uh, backing up secrets, um, if you're using some of these cloud solutions, like if you're using Azure, AWS, and other similar tools you might not need to you don't really understand they they've abstracted quite a bit of things for you so that's not that's usually not an issue for that's not something that you should really worry about but basically that's the long and short of the business continuity part of of secrets management yeah any other question Uh, questions, comments, or oh, we are all odd at secret management. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Grace, then Rashid. Uh, good evening. Good evening. 
Good evening. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. My question is, how can we apply the secret management in our real lives? Okay, that's a good question. Uh -huh. So secret management in your real life, you might need, uh, let's say you're working in a, in a cloud environment, you're working in a, in, in a dev, in a, in a, in a, let's say you're working as a cloud security engineer. So you might need to have, you might, you might need to have, um, you constantly need to have different services on your cloud environment, um, interacting with other services. So at this point, you might need something called a service account. So a service account is basically an account that assists you in interacting with other, with other, with other online services. So with other, with other for machines to interact with other machines. So what you need, uh, you might need a, a tool like, uh, you might need a secret management tool for you to be able to store this service account information. So if you have a G, if you, uh, Google Cloud, I know Google Cloud handles service accounts with, uh, you have a JSON file and then you need to store this JSON file so that you're able to call this JSON file and then it acts as the login credentials for that service account. So you might store it in a secret management tool and then you call that secret, you call your, your JSON file from that secret management tool so that it can be able to authenticate um, this other service account on a different service. Uh, so that's one of the examples. If you're, if you're using um, services like SSH to log in, um, if you've played um, Try Hack Me, if you, if you, if you do a bit of uh, uh, Try Hack Me challenges, there's a challenge called Overpass. So there's an, uh, on overpass there's a there's a place where there's an exposed secret which is a private ssh key so uh -huh. so you can use this SSH, this ssh key was you can you take this ssh key store it on your machine and then you're able to log into the server that is running overpass and that is how you get initial access right so the best way to have shared this key um if i was um if I was the person doing, if I was the security analyst at uh, at Overpass, uh, and that's that's a fictional, it's a fictional, it's a fictional organization. Maybe I will have used a different SSH authentication method that that is not reliant on that particular, that is not reliant on that particular secret. So tools like Vault um, have leveraged one-time password on on SSH. Uh, which which requires a whole seating of its own. So you're able to, when you're logging in through SSH, instead of using that certificate, uh, instead of using your private key, you can be able to log in. Uh, when you enter your details, you you log into Vault, get your one-time password, and then you use that one-time password to log into your server using SSH. So that becomes a bit, it isn't the uh the path it is it it ensures that your your login process is a bit secure because there's no password for ssh so yeah that's 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 one of the other ways that you can use ssh have i answered your question yes thank you welcome okay rashid okay hello and uh thank you Mm, so my question was regarding how do I manage the secrets when it comes to in terms of avoiding internal threats? And uh, when I speak of this, I speak of the non-technical users where you might have passwords, but then you see for them, they do not understand the importance of keeping those things a secret. So how do how do I keep these secrets? But at the same time, I manage the I manage to prevent internal attacks and all that. OK, uh huh. So the most primary, the, the most, the foundational way of managing secrets, if you ask me, is um, you need to, you need to train and sensitize your staff members extensively on why it is important to do what it is that you're doing. Um, you can do this using, um, 
you can have a training session where you can also take them through different um, different cases where uh, uh, poor secret management costed different organizations um, substantially. Uh, you can also conduct exercises on social engineering exercises and stuff like that to to do that. Those are those are the foundational parts, if you ask me. And then now preventing insider threats when you're managing secrets, you can have um, you can have uh, good uh, you can have policies set in place to to prevent cases of um, to prevent cases of internal threats so that people are able to access what exactly they need to access. So if I need access to say, I need access to say SSH key, I need access to server Y and not server X, you should have proper policies that make employee, uh -huh, let's use, what's your name again? Rashid. So let's say Rashid wants access to server X so Rashid will have access to only server X and not server Y. So yeah, that's principle of least privilege. So you have to have proper policies put in place for you to prevent cases of insider threats more often than not. Yeah, uh, I hope I've answered your question. Yes, you have, Anna. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, we have info to Will. I don't know if that's your official name. Just go ahead. Hello, uh, we have a, a hand up, okay. Here. Now we can. All right, good evening. My name is William. Yes, William. Uh, mine was just a commentary on uh, some something that uh, the girl asked previously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, mostly, let's say if, if she asked about personal life and uh, secret management. In this context, you are talking about uh, enterprise enterprise wide secret management, but uh, probably she asked about her private life. So I would I would also just say secret management for the personal life would just be password management because uh, there's likely not many users in accessing our systems. So our only users would be uh, maybe applications. So our personal life and secret management would, would only be applicable in uh, managing our passwords. So most likely I would recommend the password managers and such. Ah, only yeah, that yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, welcome, William. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I, I had actually missed that. I think that was well. That was well answered. I hope. I hope, Grace, your your question was fully answered. Um, William, do you have another question? Because your hand is still up. Uh, any other questions, comments? Questions, comments, uh, input? Okay. So uh, before we close the forum for questions and answers, I'll just go ahead and give an overview of what we've gone through. So Kiri took us through secret management. For those who joined late, uh, what secret management entails, the importance of secret management, uh, and also the challenges that are there in secret management. So he also gave us a brief history on the evolution of secret management, where we are and what still needs to be checked. And then uh, he took us through different tools of uh, different secret management tools, such as the AWS Secret Manager, the Azure Key Vault, the CyberArk Conjure, 
and the Hashikop world. And then he also went ahead and talked about their pros to ascend. So, and also what to look at when going for a secret management tool. So usability, automation, scalability, uh, is it developer friendly and such a view? Yes, so that's where we are. Any questions? Even if they're not to do with secret management, I see. Uh, do we close the forum there? Are there any other questions? Uh, William, go ahead. I would like to also add, uh, probably in, uh, in this age, we are in the age of uh, Internet of Things. So most, most uh, endpoint users are uh, decentralized. And uh, key management can be a difficult case. I don't know if Kiru can make a commentary on that. Hello, William. Pardon, I didn't quite get you. Please come again. Uh, I was mentioning that uh, the most most corporate uh, systems, or maybe probably most systems we would we'd, we'd love to manage in a, in a corporate setup would be including Internet of Things, IoT devices. Mm -hmm. So probably that can complicate the matter of secrets management. I would welcome a, a commentary on that. Okay. So, uh -huh. so with with Internet of Things, that's a really good that's a really good question. Uh, well, it's not a question, but it's uh, it's what I think. So uh, this is what I think when it comes to Internet of Things. Uh, I really haven't been able to quite explore Internet of Things and how secrets are managed. But then, um, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the huge, uh, I think one of the, I think we need to be really careful with what exactly we give access to Internet of Things. So it all boils down to having your policies properly written and well formulated, and uh, having your access control rules well um well defined so that we're able to tackle this problem of um of of iot devices and um iot iot security at large because i think there are quite a bit of issues when it comes to iot security there is still a long way to go so yeah uh, i'd like to close it as at there's still a long way to go and um we need you need to for you to be able to properly counter um, secret management issues in IoT devices, you need to have your properly your your your, your policies well well set. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think basically that's it. Uh, just another question also it got me thinking you're a data protection officer. So uh, secret management, how does it align to your role as a data protection officer or people who want to go into that line? Okay. Uh -huh. So secret management is not on my day-to-day -day role. As a, as a data protection officer, my work on paper is, um, is ensuring that my organization, the, the, the organization that I work for complies with um, the Data Protection Act of 2019. But then, um, when I got into this, um, what what is compliance really? Um, you can't have you can't have you can't fully have uh, compliance to data protection unless you have uh, good cybersecurity measures. So. Data protection and cybersecurity go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. It's there. It's like conjoined twins. So, for me to ensure that uh, my 
my employers or my employer is compliant to the data protection act uh considering that i'm also uh i'm i'm i'm, I'm the i'm i'm everything in cyber security so at the at the organization uh it's a, i'm a one man team basically so you have to ensure that you have uh you have good cyber security practices for you to be able to properly for you to be able to uh comply with the data protection act because when what people look at uh i might i might get stoned for this but it's it's true what what happens uh, in norm, in present day organizations is they want to have uh they want to have information security policies and then they close it at that which is not a good practice so as as a as an ethical security analyst or as a as a, as a, as, a, as a security analyst I, I i don't like using the term engineer so as a security analyst you able to you need to have proper cyber security measures for you to ensure that you're compliant with the with the data protection act in general because you might have all these fancy policies all these fancy controls on paper but then uh uh ground we need different so yeah just ju that's how that's how i found myself doing things like secret management and and also my it's a it's a software company so uh ha these are some of the challenges that we face the on a on a day to day so yeah so that's how i found myself into secret management and and and, and other and other interesting things so yeah have i answered your question yes you have yeah so as we come to the end of the session are there are there any other questions okay hannah go ahead Hi everyone. Hi. Um, am I audible? Yes, you are. Um, okay. So um, I'm asking kindly, pardon, on how I can share my SSH key with someone else. Ah, okay. Uh huh. So, uh, what I was uh huh. So if you if you're using a secret management tool like Vault. They'll give you two ways of sharing, of sharing your SSH key. Uh, I think one one is being sunsetted in favor of the other one. So the example that I was giving earlier was um, how to how to sufficiently manage SSH keys in an organization. So, uh, huh, let me give you a problem. So uh, you have you have different servers of course you shouldn't share your ssh key because it's it's a private key private key is meant for you so if someone else has that private key they'll be able to access everything that you can access at that uh, at at any given time as long as the server is up and they have the key so the 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 the, the solution that uh guys at hashicorp had was um was to was to get rid of the key, the concept of the SSH key completely. And then um, you're able to, because the SSH is, is a set of configuration, there are a set of configurations that are used to ensure that SSH works correctly. So what you need to do is just change the configurations on your on your SSH configurations file, configuration files on the server. And then you can have, um, you can have you can have a SSH you can have your server um, get a key from your vault server so get a get a password from a vault server to authenticate the user and then once they do that you're able to this password is a one time password so the moment it's used it expires so uh -huh. so you're able to you you go you go to your vault server and then you you get you get an SSH key you specify the server that you want to access so you say i want to access uh let's say my server running 
Jenkins. So you you say I, my name is Hannah, my username is Hannah, and I need to access my Jenkins server. So you provide the IP address. So Holt checks if that server is in the same network or it's a it's it's a server that is allowed to that it's a server that is the SSH protocol is managed by 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 is 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 managed by vault in terms of credential generation and then it generates a credential for you so what you need to do is just log in as hana and then you have that one time password so you can create more users and not just hana so if you want to share it with uh with hope for example so you'll just tell hope to log into vault hope will log into vault and get an, uh, a one-time password for herself and then she'll be able to log in and that's how you share you won't you'll share your credentials or sharing your credentials so if hope has already finished what she's doing with with your jenkins server hope can you can get rid of hope's account on vault and then hope won't have access to it anymore yeah so it centralizes authentication and also prevents redu uh, gets gets rid of the case where you have to share your ssh key with other people and whatnot yeah have i answered your question yeah thank you welcome okay so if there are no other questions thank you kiru so much for taking us through secret management and how um how it is in our lives, how it's feasible in our lives and how to apply it. So we've definitely been intrigued by the conversation and I know I look forward to doing more research on secret management and actually understanding how it works and its advantages. So as we come to the end of our session, thank you so much and have a lovely night. Thank you everyone for attending and being here. I hope you enjoyed the session.